so good morning students today we are going to start with nelson mandela a long walk to freedom so in order to connect it to the previous one let me recapitulate that what we have read that first of all the chapter starts with the description of the speech during the oath taking ceremony of nelson mandela okay when he was chosen as the first south african president who is one of the black president for first ever in the history of south africa that he was elected and the ceremony of oath taking it took place in the union buildings of pretoria okay so there it was taken place in a sandstone amphitheater which was formed by the union buildings of pretoria this was the seat of only you can say white people only earlier it was the seat of white supremacy but it is for the first time that a black president is going to take oath in these buildings so on that day his daughter janani was also accompanied along with him and he has mentioned in his speech that first of all he has explained about the greatest human disaster okay this we have read which lasted too long then he has also mentioned about the various dignitaries present and paid his respects towards them that they have spared their time and they have come to attend this you can say first ever great event of the history in which the people of south africa they have undergone the policy of apartheid they have suffered a lot this is the reason why this is the greatest human disaster okay so next he said that he will provide political emancipation and he has also pledged to to provide his people all the facilities not to make them suffer from poverty deprivation suffering gender and other kind of discrimination so after that he has mentioned about the helicopters and the impala jets that were giving out a trail of the colors of south african flag that is red black green blue and gold so this day this day was symbolized uh it was symbolized because at that time two national anthems were played why these two national anthems were played one of that of blacks and one of that of whites it shows that there was equality between the two there was equality between the two and on the day of inauguration he was remembered by the history that in the starting of the 20th century that in the first decade when the anglo boer war has happened during that time he said that the white skin people they have passed up a difference among you can say white among uh, for you can say black people that they were not allowed equality of rights they were not allowed to sit along with them and since then number of black people they have undergone struggles they have undergone various kind of sacrifices and on that day when this policy of apartheid it has come to an end he said that at that time he said he said that i was overwhelmed to thank them but he said but i feel my incapability of thanking them and he also says that he was also not able to explain them what kind of you can say what kind of what kind of result their sacrifices has brought so after that he said that it is through his this struggle of apartheid that he has come to know that this you can say that this meaning of courage okay he has come to know about the meaning of courage that courage is not only absence of fear but what courage is actually is courage actually means you can say overcoming that fear okay so afterwards he has mentioned that as love is natural similarly hate is natural similarly love is natural if one can be taught to hate one can also be taught to love okay so next afterwards we proceed towards the reading of this chapter okay so now let us start from page number 21 page number is 21 so now what he is saying he is saying that in life in life every man has two kinds of obligations okay so what he is saying he is saying that in life 
every man has two kind of obligations right so first of all obligation to his family to his parents to his wife and children and he has an obligation to his people his community his country so what he is saying he is saying that in life every man has to have face two kind of obligations he has to fulfill these two kind of obligations what these two kind of obligations one that is towards his family towards his children okay that he has to fulfill okay he has to fulfill his duty towards his parents towards his children towards his wife and the next obligation what he is saying he is saying that he has to fulfill towards his community towards his country so in a in a civil and humane society each man is able to fulfill those obligations according to his own inclinations and abilities so what he is saying he is saying that in a life when a person is living the life every man he can fulfill his both these obligations according to his abilities according to his you can say priorities okay whichever he feel if he is giving more priority prioritizing his wife and children he will pay or he will fulfill his these obligation but he if he will prioritize his country he will fulfill the other obligation first it depends upon the nature of the person that which kind of obligation he is fulfilling which kind of duty he is paying more attention but what he is saying for a country like south africa it was almost impossible for a man of my birth and color to fulfill both of these obligation but what he is saying he is saying that like but for a man like me in country like south africa why in a country like south africa it is just because of the reason because there it was prevalent the policy of apartheid and the discrimination as the black people they were not giving equal rights as that of white people they were not allowed to move freely they were not having the uh, you can say they were also not having the you can say the right to vote so many problems they were suffering they were not allowed to sit at many places why just because of the skin of their color is black so the white people they have passed up a difference against them so what he is saying but this is the reason why a person like me in south africa if he has gone he is not able to fulfill these kind of obligations both these obligations at one time it means he can either fulfill his obligation towards his society towards his community or towards his towards his children and family but not these two obligations at one time now in south africa a man of color who attempted to live as a human being was punished and isolated so this is his experience what he is explaining he is saying like in south africa a man like me he said that who is going against these rules and these laws so ultimately what is happening to such a man that such a man is getting isolated from the society but why in south africa a man who tried to fulfill his duty to his people was inevitably was, you can say he was ripped away from all kind of you can say freedom that was his one so ultimately what he is saying that he is ripped away ripped away means separated torn apart okay so what he is saying that in south africa when a man is going to fulfill both these obligations his freedom is ripped apart it is torn apart and when he is trying to fulfill his duty to his people it was inevitably ripped from his family and yes when a man is trying to fulfill his duty towards his community towards his country when he is fighting against this apartheid he is separated from his family why he is saying so because he has spent a secluded life he has he has spent a lot of years separated from his life and it is just because of this reason that he is saying that he was ripped away inevitably means unavoidably okay he is separated from his family and his home was forced to live a life apart a twilight existence of secrecy and rebellion yes and what kind of life he is living a life of secrecy that nobody should come to know about his existence secretly he is pursuing his motives his pursuits and ultimately 
he is also living the life of rebellion when he is when he is fulfilling his duty towards his community he is as the he is as the rebel why a rebel because in an attempt to fight against you can say in an attempt to fight against a party he has to go against the government as he has mentioned that the generals who just they were bedecked with the ribbons and medals they were saluting him at that time okay so what it means that at before that he said they did not pay any respect and he has also undergone harsh brutalities at the hands of these generals these you can say uh, police officials but now they are saluting him so this is the reason why he is saying when he was fulfilling his duty towards his community towards his you can say country what kind of life he was living a life of seclusion separation from the society because he is considered to be a rebel rebel means who is against the norms of the society okay but ultimately you know that a change is always brought about because of a rebel it is a rebel who always thinks in a different line of thought he brings a change in the society so i did not in the beginning choose to place my people above my family but in attempting to serve my people i found that i was prevented from fulfilling my obligations as a son a brother a father and a husband so what he is saying he said in the starting when i started fighting this apartheid he said i was not at all placing my country before my family i was always giving importance to my family okay he was fulfilling he said that i was fulfilling my duties towards my family towards my country uh, sorry to my wife parents to mark my wife you know as a father when a man is grown up he has many responsibilities for his children to be fulfilled for his wife for his son for his parents to take care of them to provide them all the materialistic pleasure to provide them all the you can say uh, all the required facilities which we should be able which we should make his family to live a life of fulfillment but he said at the starting i was not placing my family you can say my family at the top of my country but slowly and gradually what has happened when he was in this war against apartheid when he was in the in that line then he was not able to fulfill his you can say obligations towards his family towards his wife as a son also and as a good father because because as i told, told you that when he was fighting against apartheid he was considered to be a rebel okay rebel this is the reason why he was living a life of seclusion separation from other and it is just because of this reason that he was not allowed to meet his family many years he was he has spent many years of imprisonment during that time who is taking care of his family who is providing them all the facilities nobody else so what is there so this is the reason why he is that why it is that that he was not able to fulfill his obligation so i was not born with the hunger to be free so now next is his idea about freedom so what he said i was not born with the hunger to be free i was born free free in every way that i could know he said in the starting when i was born i did not have he said any hunger to be free i did not ever thought that i should be free because he thought that i am born free and i am free to enjoy any kind of you can say freedom because he he was not ever thinking that i am i am in shackles i am in boundaries okay that my freedom is curtailed curtailed means stopped taken away from him he said he thought he never thought so he thought that i am born free and i am free but gradually his you can say sense of freedom it has altogether changed so what happened free to run in the fields near my mother's hut free to swim in the clear stream and ran through my village free to roast mealies the sort of you can say uh, food item there under the stars and ride the broad barite the broad backs of slow moving bulls so you see how his you can say statement of freedom it changes with time so at this time what he is thinking of freedom he is thinking of freedom that it is yeah it is like that enjoyment that every child wants free to run outside my mother's hut free to ride the backs of the bulls okay then free free to cook any type of food that he want under the stars free to have a dive in the 
pond, lake or river and just to enjoy. This is what he thought his freedom is. Okay. So, next. As long as I obeyed my father and abided by the custom. Abided means followed the customs of, one, of my tribe. I was not troubled by the laws of man or God. So what he said, as long as I obeyed. He said, as long as I was moving along the norms of the society, I was following my father. I never thought in a different manner. So what, I, what was the thinking of the tribe? I moved along with that. And he said that whenever I followed the customs of my society, of my tribe, till then everything was fine. Everything was fine. I thought, that my freedom is what I have felt. But I was troubled by the laws of man or God. But slowly and gradually what has happened that he was troubled. He was tormented. He was feeling that something is wrong at some place. He said that then I came to know that there are different laws of man and God. Then we must have witnessed this kind of discrimination. Then he has come to be opposite to what actually his thinking was. It was only when I began to learn that my boyhood freedom was an illusion. So what he said, he said that it was only, it was just the time, he said, when I came to know that my boyhood, boyhood means when he was enjoying all these things. That is running outside the hut to having a dive in the stream of water, to roast mealies and to run the back of the bulls. What he's saying at that time, at one time it came when I realized that my this freedom is actually what it is actually an illusion it is a false notion he actually thought this is not my freedom so when i discovered as a young man that my freedom had already been taken from me then i began to hunger for it so what he said he said but then i realized my freedom has been taken away from me why his freedom has been taken away from from him so it is just because of this reason that he thought that he has faced this kind of discrimination between black and white. Then he thought that what I was thinking freedom is actually not my freedom. My freedom has actually been taken away from me. That was not my freedom. And that I began to hunger for it. At first, as a student, I wanted freedom only for myself. The transitory freedoms of being able to stay out at night. Out, uh, read what I pleased and go wherever I chose. Then he said, "Then when I have grown as grown up, he has grown as a young man. Then what he thought, he thought that my freedom, then his, you can say, definition of freedom has changed. So what he said at that time, I thought that that transitory freedom, transitory means he was he was having changing definitions of freedom. Why?" Because he was able to stay out at night. He has grown up. He was allowed by his parents to stay out. Okay. With his friends. Okay. Then. Then ultimately. He's, he can read anything he wants. He does not have to take permission of anybody. And ultimately he thought that this is my freedom. But. But later as a young man in Johannesburg. I yearned. Yearn means to strongly desire something. I yearned for the basic and honorable freedoms of achieving my potential. So, but later on, when he had, <coughs> sorry, when he has turned out to be a young man. So at that time, what he has thought, he thought that I yearned for basic and honorable freedoms of achieving my potential. I yearned. He was having a strong desire that he should get the basic, you can say basic, uh, basic type of freedom. That every man must have in his life. He said, but I was not having. Why he was not having? It was just because of the reason that his freedom is curtailed. Some, many a times he must have appeared in a job. But it is just because of differentiation between the black and the white. He was not able to secure that. At that time, he had realized that this is not freedom what I have thought. Okay. So, and earning my potential, he said, I have to fight. To earn, to get a job according to my potential. He must have been well educated being as a lawyer. Okay, but he said, but I was not getting equality to that of white people. This is the reason he was trying to secure his potential of earning my keep. Earning my keep means to earn his money in order to 
put on his daily needs of marrying and having a family the freedom not to be obstructed in a lawful life and of marrying uh, during marriage also i was not given equality and the freedom this kind of freedom he said it was never observed in a lawful life so his notion of freedom has changed so write down the question here please write down the question on the book on the side of this paragraph how did the definition of freedom how did the definition of freedom or the notion of freedom change for nelson mandela okay so how this changed so because when he was a young child your sorry boy he was just thinking that is to run in the fields to cook meals and under the stars to run back to run the backs of the bulls it was freedom later on when he has grown up when he was completing his study he said that to hang out with his friends at night to read whatever he wants is actually freedom okay to hang out with his friends to enjoy some time to spend a night out is a you can say freedom for him but later on when he has grown up as a young man when he was uh, trying to secure a job in johannesburg he said that at that time he was thinking that his freedom is not actually what he has already thought he has to you can say face a number of difficulties in order to secure his job in order to get uh, get a job according to his own potential so at that time his notion of freedom has altogether changed so at that time he thought that his freedom was actually not what he had earlier thought his freedom it had already been taken away from him it has already been taken away from him right so but then i slowly saw that not only was i not free but my brothers and sisters were also not free so then he realized that it was not only who was free okay but his brothers and sisters they were also not free here brothers and sisters refers to the people of his race all blacks he is referring to here they were not also free why because they were also facing the same kind of discrimination that he has undergone the same kind of discrimination that the other people are face facing at that time he has come to know that freedom is not actually what he has thought i saw that it was not just my freedom that was curtailed curtailed means stopped reduced but the freedom of everyone who looked like i did so what he said he then he said that he then he realized that it was not just his freedom it was not just his freedom that was curtailed it was not his freedom that that has been ripped away from him no it was the freedom of everyone who looked like i did so it was like you can say curtailing the freedom reducing the freedom ripping away of the freedom of everyone who is just similar to him just similar to him means like who is just black like him okay so it means that at each and every point in the chapter nelson mandela he is presenting the kind of discrimination that is being met by black people at the hands of white people so he is talking about it and that is when i joined african national congress so write down the question when did nelson mandela when and why did nelson mandela join africa national congress write down the question here when and why did nelson mandela african join africa national congress so at that time he has joined africa national congress so what he is saying he is saying that when he has realized that his you can say that his um that his freedom it is not only his freedom that has been curtailed that he was it was not only he who was separated because of his freedom no but actually what it was it was just because the freedom of all the people like him it has been ripped away it has been taken away from him then at that point at that moment he has realized that something has to be done and at that moment he has joined this political party that is african national congress in order to stand against this policy of apartheid to stand against this kind of discrimination that was being being prevalent he wanted to call he wanted to bring an end to this kind of policy why this kind of discrimination is possible and it is prevalent when everyone because if the laws of god is same for everyone 
then why not the laws of human beings are same for everyone? Why this kind of separation among white and black? And then he thought that number of people of his race, they have fought against it. They have sacrificed it. Why should not he? Now, this is when I joined African National Congress and this is when the hunger for my own freedom became greater for greater hunger for the freedom of my people. And what he said, he said at that time, the hunger of my freedom, it is not so important at that time that I want that my hunger for freedom for my people, it has taken its part. It means that his hunger for freedom, he wanted freedom not for himself only, but he wanted freedom for his people, for the people of his race. He wanted to bring an end to this kind of, you can say, discrimination so that they will also enjoy freedom. Right? So he said that at that time he has joined African National Congress. And it was the desire for the freedom of Thai people to live their lives with dignity and self-respect. And what he said that at this time he thought that he should provide a life to his people so that they can live a life of dignity and respect so that they can also enjoy living the life of dignity and respect in which everyone should be given equality of rights everyone should be given you can say equality of thoughts equality of equality in freedom it is not like that that the white people they will enjoy all the rights and the black people they will just suffer so this is the reason why he joined africa national congress so today till here we will do Tomorrow we will continue in the next lecture. So if you have any problem, you can ask me at any time. You can ask my questions now.